In the annals of human ingenuity, few achievements stand as tall as the Space Shuttle program, representing the pinnacle of technological innovation and human exploration. The Shuttle program marked a significant departure from its predecessors, such as the Apollo rockets, by introducing a revolutionary concept, reusability. Unlike the Apollo missions, where rockets were single-use vehicles, the Space Shuttle's ability to launch, land and be refurbished for subsequent missions represented a groundbreaking leap forward in efficiency and cost-effectiveness. As NASA celebrated the success of 27 triumphant missions, the Space Shuttle Columbia embarked on yet another routine journey, a testament to the program's reliability and prowess. However, amidst the backdrop of optimism and achievement, tragedy struck with devastating force as Columbia shattered upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. The disaster sent shockwaves reverberating not only through NASA and the United States, but across the entire world. So, what's the history of the Columbia Space Shuttle disaster? The purpose of the Space Shuttle program, including the missions undertaken by the Space Shuttle Columbia, was manifold, encompassing scientific research, technological innovation and international cooperation. As the first reusable spacecraft system, the Space Shuttle program aims to revolutionise space exploration by providing a cost-effective and versatile platform for a wide range of missions. Columbia's missions exemplified this multifaceted approach, from deploying satellites and conducting experiments in microgravity, to servicing space telescopes and conducting groundbreaking scientific research. Each mission served a distinct purpose in furthering our understanding of the cosmos and improving life on Earth. For instance, Columbia played a crucial role in the construction and maintenance of the International Space Station, delivering essential components and supplies to support long-duration human habitation in space. Moreover, Columbia's missions fostered international collaboration, with astronauts from various countries participating in joint ventures and scientific endeavours. This spirit of cooperation not only strengthened diplomatic ties, but also facilitated the sharing of knowledge and resources, advancing the collective pursuit of scientific discovery and knowledge. The seven-member crew of Columbia was meticulously selected in July 2000, each member bringing a wealth of expertise and experience to their respective roles. Commanding the mission was Rick Husband, a seasoned US Air Force colonel and test pilot who had previously distinguished himself on a logistics and resupply mission for the International Space Station. Assisting him as the mission's pilot was William McCool, a highly skilled US Navy commander embarking on his inaugural spaceflight. Michael Anderson, a US Air Force Lieutenant Colonel with prior experience on a mission to the Mir space station, assumed the crucial role of payload commander, overseeing the mission's scientific objectives. Serving as the flight engineer was Alpana Chawla, whose previous mission to conduct experiments using the United States microgravity payload had solidified her reputation as an invaluable asset to the team. Joining the crew as mission specialists on their maiden spaceflights were David Brown and Laurel Clark, both Navy captains, bringing a wealth of knowledge and expertise to the mission's scientific endeavours. Lastly, Ilan Ramon, a colonel in the Israeli Air Force and the first Israeli astronaut, contributed as payload specialist, representing not only his nation, but also the embodiment of a global partnership. Together, this diverse and highly skilled team embarked on their mission, STS-107, with a shared commitment to advancing scientific discovery and exploration. On the 1st of February 2003, the day of Columbia's launch, the atmosphere at NASA's Kennedy Space Center was one of anticipation and excitement, tinged with the familiar sense of routine that accompanied space shuttle missions. The meticulous preparations, countless simulations, and exhaustive checks had all culminated in this moment, a launch day that promised to be another routine step in humanity's ongoing efforts of exploration. As dawn broke over the Florida horizon, the sleek silhouette of the space shuttle stood poised on the launch pad, bathed in the glow of floodlights and surrounded by billowing clouds of steam. The air crackled with energy as teams of engineers, technicians and astronauts went about their final preparations, ensuring that every detail was meticulously attended to. 
Amidst the flurry of activity, the astronauts donned their iconic orange pressure suits, each individual embodying a unique blend of nerves and anticipation as they mentally prepared for the journey ahead. Inside the shuttle, systems hummed to life as computers ran through their pre-launch checklists, ensuring that all was in readiness for the monumental task ahead. At T-9 minutes, the final countdown commenced, punctuated by the staccato voice of Mission Control as they guided the shuttle through its final moments on the launch pad. With each passing second, the tension mounted, tempered only by the calm professionalism of the men and women tasked with guiding Columbia safely into space. Then, as the countdown reached its crescendo, the main engines roared to life in a thunderous cacophony of sound and fury. With a burst of flame and billowing clouds of smoke, the solid rocket boosters ignited, propelling the shuttle skyward with a force that defies comprehension, leaving behind a trail of smoke and fire as it pierced the Earth's atmosphere. For those watching below, the sight was awe-inspiring, a testament to human ingenuity and the unyielding spirit of exploration that drives us ever onward into the unknown. And yet, little did they know that tragedy lurks just beyond the horizon. As Columbia ascended majestically into the boundless expanse of the sky, an unforeseen and seemingly innocuous event unfolded that would ultimately prove catastrophic. Just 82 seconds into the flight, a small piece of insulating foam, weighing only a few pounds, but travelling at incredible speed, broke away from the shuttle's external fuel tank and struck the fragile thermal protection system on the leading edge of Columbia's left wing. At this time, this event seemed inconsequential, a minor glitch in an otherwise flawless mission. The foam debris was a known issue, and previous occurrences had not resulted in any significant damage. However, unbeknownst to the crew or mission control, this seemingly routine incident would have far-reaching consequences. The impact of the foam dislodged a crucial section of the shuttle's thermal protection tiles, leaving a small but critical breach in the wing's armour, allowing superheated gases to penetrate the shuttle's delicate internal structure during re-entry. As engineers scrutinised the video recordings captured during the launch, concerns began to emerge regarding the impact of the foam debris on the shuttle's left wing. Expert analysis revealed that the foam strike had occurred at a velocity and angle that posed a significant risk to the shuttle's structural integrity, potentially compromising its ability to withstand the intense heat and stress of re-entry. These concerns were further underscored by simulations and tests conducted, which highlighted the catastrophic consequences of a breach in the shuttle's thermal protection system. Despite mounting evidence and warnings from engineers and experts within NASA, these concerns were ultimately dismissed or downplayed, overshadowed by the prevailing attitude of complacency and overconfidence that pervaded the organization at that time. Meanwhile, throughout their mission aboard STS-107, the crew navigated through a complex array of experiments and research initiatives, each carefully designed to maximize the scientific yield of their time in space. Throughout their mission, the crew operated in a dynamic and collaborative environment, working closely together to overcome challenges and achieve their scientific goals, ranging from material science and biology to astronomy and atmospheric research, pushing the boundaries of human knowledge and innovation. As their time in space drew to a close, the crew began preparations for their return to Earth, ensuring that all experiments were completed, data was collected, and equipment was safely stowed. With the same professionalism and dedication that had characterized their mission from the outset, they readied themselves for their journey home, eager to share their discoveries with the world. Little did they know that tragedy awaited them upon re-entry, casting a shadow over the remarkable achievements of STS-107. At 3.30 Eastern Standard Time, the entry flight control team assumed their positions at the Mission Control Center, ready to oversee the final stages of the mission. Meanwhile, aboard the orbiter, with meticulous attention to detail, they worked through the entry checklist, ensuring that every step was completed with precision and care. At 8.10 a.m., Capsule Commander Charlie Hober relayed the approval for the crew to proceed with the deorbit burn critical that would set Columbia on its trajectory for re-entry. With the steady hand and unwavering focus, the crew executed the deorbit burn flawlessly at 8.15.30 am. 
a manoeuvre that lasted 2 minutes and 38 seconds. At 8.44.09, Columbia re-entered the Earth's atmosphere at an altitude of 400,000 feet, a moment known as entry interface. However, unbeknownst to the crew or ground controllers, a catastrophic chain of events had already been set in motion. Superheated plasma was being funneled into the damaged wing and began melting the aluminium structure. Four and a half minutes after entry interface, sensors detected abnormal strain on the left wing, recording data internally without transmitting it to the crew or ground controllers. As the orbiter began to yaw to the left due to increased drag on the damaged wing, the crew and mission control remained unaware due to corrections made by the orbiter's flight control system. However, sensors in the left wheel well soon reported a rise in temperature, a foreboding sign of the tragedy that would soon unfold. Eyewitnesses on the ground observed sudden bursts of brightness indicative of pieces of debris shedding from the orbiter. At 8.54.24 am, the mission control team received troubling reports, noting hydraulic sensor readings below the detection thresholds in the left wing. This was a foreboding sign of potential damage to the shuttle's vital systems. Despite the unfolding crisis, Columbia pressed on passing over Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. Observers on the ground continued to report sightings of debris being shed as the stricken orbiter continued its inexorable descent. The crew became aware of the escalating situation, 8.58.39, when fault messages indicated a loss of pressure in the left landing gear tires. Confusion reigned as conflicting sensor readings suggested uncertainty regarding the status of the landing gear. It must have been puzzling for the crew to be faced with such diametrically opposed information. As Columbia's left wing continued to deteriorate, the orbiter veered off course, necessitating corrective maneuvers by the reaction control system thrusters. However, these efforts proved futile in the face of mounting structural damage and loss of control. The crew's final moments were marked by chaos and confusion as the orbiter broke apart, subjected to unimaginable forces. The interior walls of the fuselage were compromised, resulting in the crew compartment's rapid depressurization and death of its seven inhabitants. Tragically, at 8.59.32, all communication with Columbia was abruptly severed as the orbiter disintegrated. The radio silence at Mission Control was deafening. By 9.35 a.m., all of the debris and remnants of Columbia, along with the remains of its courageous crew, had impacted the ground below, bringing an end to a mission that had begun with such promise, but ended in such tragedy. The disaster prompted a period of deep reflection and introspection within the global scientific community, as well as among the general public about the sacrifices and uncertainties inherent in pushing the boundaries of human endeavour. The tragedy also underscored the fragility of our technological achievements and the need for relentless vigilance in pursuit of safety and reliability. Governments, space agencies and private entities worldwide were compelled to reassess their own space programs, aiming to mitigate risks and prevent similar disasters in the future. Moreover, the Columbia disaster sparked conversations about the future of space exploration and the balance between ambition and safety. It prompted a renewed commitment to learning from failures, implementing stringent safety measures, and fostering a culture of transparency and accountability within the aerospace industry. The Columbia disaster stands as a solemn testament to the extraordinary courage and selflessness exhibited by the seven astronauts who made the ultimate sacrifice. Their dedication, expertise, and unwavering commitment to understanding the environment around us serve as an enduring legacy inspiring future generations of scientists, engineers, and adventurers. The crew of Columbia understood the risks inherent in space travel, yet they embraced these challenges with courage and conviction, knowing that their contributions would pave the way for future generations to reach even greater heights. Through their bravery and sacrifice, the crew of Columbia left an indelible mark on the history of space exploration, ensuring that their memory will forever be enshrined in the annals of human achievement. Theirs is a legacy of courage, dedication, and the unyielding pursuit of knowledge, a beacon of inspiration for all who dare to dream of reaching the stars.